welcome back everyone. I'm here to talk to you today about uh, this mushroom. It's not very common in our area, but we're having a bumper year this year. It has some medicinal properties. Let's learn about it. So last time I was at the cabin, I showed you guys that I harvested uh, a really special mushroom. One that I really haven't seen much around the cabin at all. Like in the nine years I've been there, this is the very first time that I have seen this mushroom. So what is it? Well, this is Ganoderma tsuge. So this is the varnish shelf or hemlock varnish shelf, uh, commonly found uh, usually on hemlock, but you can find it on other conifers. Um, if you find a mushroom like this on a hardwood, uh, that's a Ganoderma lucidum and also called the Rishi mushroom. So um, Ganoderma, they do have uh, medicinal properties, uh, very uh, widely used in traditional Chinese medicine. Some of you asked what books to get for mushroom foraging. I like this one, Mushrooms of the Northeastern U.S. and Eastern Canada. You should probably get one for your area. And if you look here, here it is, Ganoderma suge. Um, and there's lots of different names. It is a polypore mushroom, and I'll just show you how it looks like. Um, so it gives you lots of good information on it here and shows you a really cool picture. And uh, yes, you can find it on dead hemlock logs or standing trees anytime between May and November. Right now, uh, we're into June. And uh, yeah, it's like these have been growing for a few weeks, so that's how they get to this size. They start off pretty small, a uh, little button stage, and then they kind of, um, they spread. So they start off pretty small, a little button stage, and then they get larger over the coming weeks. So I'll just show you, you know, it's growing at the cabin there on that old dead log. It does cause uh, white rot of the conifers. And uh, as you can see, it's got a really nice shiny, like brownish um, cap. It's really, really slippery, very firm. You can kind of knock on it, it's pretty hard there. And I cut it off at the end, you can kind of see the flesh there. It's a little bit creamy. Uh, Gander melucinum is a bit more brown. Um, underneath, uh, you can see a, a beautiful white porous surface. So it is a polypore mushroom. We can kind of go in there and see the pores. Uh, where it is brown is actually where it has been traumatized. It has a brown spore print. And you know where I've kind of touched it or banged it, um, you know, it definitely leaves dark brown marks. Sometimes when you find them in the forest, you'll see, uh, you know, woodpeckers have been at the area and there's like sawdust and stuff on them, or they're heavily covered with brown, um, you know, uh, spores that have come out of the bottoms of uh, the polypore. So this is a divine mushroom, highly touted in Chinese medicine. It, the Ganoderma suge has some of the properties that the Rishi has being in the Ganoderma family. So what are they? Well, there are lots of benefits, uh, including anti-inflammatory properties, especially when it comes to the lungs. Uh, and anti-tumorigenic properties. So it has been shown in some leukemias, some colorectal cancers, and some breast cancers to have some effect on the tumors and uh, to help you know, reduce their size. There's lots of studies out there. You can read them up online. Um, excellent wound healing uh, capabilities of the Rishi and Lishi mushrooms. So uh, this is a really, really important medicinal mushroom. Dosages vary. And of course, uh, trying to like get the exact dose for these medicinal properties is always um, the challenge to make sure it's a kind of a consistent result. But uh, lots of potential there, lots of studies out there, uh, and has been widely used for a really, really long time uh, in Chinese medicine. So how I'm going to prepare this mushroom, I mean, you can make teas out of it, you can make tinctures, um, obviously in alcohol. Um, I want to make this into a tea. Since I'm going to be uh, making them into a tea, I'm going to dry them out. Uh, you can use them fresh in the tea, um, but what I'm going to do, because I want to use this like, you know, over the coming months, is just make, you know, cut this up into tiny little slivers, uh, use my dehydrator, and I get them stored in a cool, dry place. So I'll just brush off the dirt off this one and get it in the dehydrator. In addition to making teas, did you know that you could also make beer uh, and flavor it with the reishi? Uh, it does have a little bit of a bitter taste, so maybe that would replace your hops. So how cool is that? And as always, before trying a new um, medicinal supplement, make sure you talk to your doctor first or your natural health practitioner to make sure it's right for you. All right, through the magic of TV, uh, we're going to take a look at these. Uh, they've literally been drying. like They were dry within six hours, but let them go a little bit longer. It's the Ballet Sportsman six-tier dehydrator uh, from Princess Auto. Super powerful. Um, literally, I mean, this holds like five pounds of stuff. It's got like multiple... Uh, trays here you can see a uh, really nice fan you can adjust the temperature and the time just like my old one um, and uh, there we go so all nice and dry ready to be stored uh, in a nice dry dark area all right so I have my dried mushrooms here and uh, my instant pot so this is a way that you can extract uh, 
some of the medicinal properties from uh, the reishi mushroom. Um, some people swear by it, doing it uh, under higher pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract uh, some of the sugars, the uh, beta-glucans, out of the reishi lingshi mushroom. So what I want to do is I'm going to add about six cups of water to the Instant Pot with uh, a few chunks of the reishi. So the beta-glucans are polysaccharides, or sugars that are found in the walls, uh, cell walls of the mushroom. And uh, they are really important for the immune response in our bodies. So uh, this is one of the, um, there's some of the reishi in there. So this is one of the uh, types of medic medicines that we can extract from the reishi. The other is the triterpenoids, uh, which are extracted using uh, an alcohol extraction method. So got a few chunks of reishi in there. And add a little bit more water there to the chunks of reishi. Just need to add a little bit more water there. And uh, what we'll do is put the uh, Instant Pot on. So we're going to want to uh, pressure cook it, but pressure cook uh, on low. Uh, we'll probably do this for about, I'm going to say, 10 minutes or so. And usually this Instant Pot will get up to anywhere between 10 and 15 PSI, which is what we want. All right, let's let it work its magic. All right, it looks like we're done. Let's take a look. Ooh, it smells very mushroomy. Okay, I think we need to go a little bit longer. All right, I'm just kind of... Uh, winging it here so let's do a little bit longer maybe I'll try this for 30 minutes see if we can get a little bit more out of there all right there we go all right let's take a look ooh looks pretty good kind of a weak tea what I might do now ooh it smells nice and mushroomy what I might do now is just let this sit on the keep warm function um, for a little while longer just to see if I can get a little bit more of the carbs uh, extracted from the cell membrane of the mushroom. So with the keep warm function uh, it kind of keeps it anywhere between oh, 150 170 Fahrenheit. So kind of like keeping it um, you know on the stove for a little while longer. Um, normally I would cook this up. Normally I would do the decoction um, on the stove for several hours uh, in sort of like a, like a crock pot at low setting but well we're experimenting with the instant pot today so let's give this a whirl well there you go still um, gonna be a really good tea there made it a little bit weak um, I know it's really bitter so I just want to uh, give it a try I'm gonna put this in the fridge right now uh, cool this down we're gonna make iced tea today all I'm doing here is just straining this into my pitcher in the fridge so get all the little chunks out of there and we'll just have our tea Chunks I have left over, I'm going to dry them out again. I could probably use them in a mushroom broth later on. And there it is. You can see a very um, light brown color to it. Uh, if you want it to be uh, really strong, medicinal, bitter flavor, add a lot more reishi and let it go a bit longer on the heat. All right, it's a hot day out today and I'm going to make some iced tea. So I've got my reishi uh, mushroom decoction and I've got a nice little jar here. So let's pour in some tea. Oh yeah, so I made it, like I said, nice and light because it is bitter, so I don't want to get too, too strong uh, for my summer teas. Uh, we'll have some of the medicinal properties in there. And I'm just gonna squeeze some fresh lemon in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, nice. And it will be a little bit tart, so I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, organic cane sugar in there. Sweeten it up a little bit. How about? Oh yeah. Maybe a little bit more. I guess that's what those of you from the south call sweet tea, I'm guessing, not regular tea. Uh, you'll have to correct me down below in the comments. So let's give this a try. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, very mushroomy. But the lemonade, that I homemade lemonade, tastes really good. I might add a little bit more sugar to it, to be honest. It is a little bit tart. Let's do that. Uh, it is not, uh, it is a little bit bitter, but re like because I made this a very weak reishi tea, it's very nice, very tolerable, but a very mushroomy flavor. So it has all those medicinal benefits for you. So um, some people add different spices to it. Some people, um, you know, when they're kind of letting it stay warm, you know, in the Instant Pot or on the stove, will add like cinnamon sticks and things like that. Just if you want to make a, a flavorful drink um, to kind of mask the bitterness a little bit, the medicinal taste of it. But all oh, this is great very very refreshing and medicinal on a very nice hot day
Well, thanks so much for joining me to learn a bit about medicinal uh, reishi mushroom, the mushroom immortality, as they call it. So if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next show. Take care.